Hello, I am Dr. T.K. Swami, Surgical Gastroenterologist, Senior Consultant in the Department of Surgical Gastroenterology, Valley Hospital, Erode. In this video, I will show you how to do laparoscopic Nissen fund application in a step-by-step -step manner. First, we will see the port placements. We have done a separate video for port placements in laparoscopic Nissen fund application. The link I have given in the description below. If you are interested, you can have a look. The surgeon is standing in between the legs and the position of the patient is head up and the left shoulder up. We use five ports. 10 mm, one 10 mm for the camera. All the other four will be 5 mm ports. The camera port is placed above one to the left of the umbilicus. It is directed towards the midline or to the left of the midline. The next port we use is the liver retraction port. It is 2 to 3 cm above the lower border of the liver so that when you lift the liver you use the body of the instrument not the tip of the instrument. The next is the left subcostal port, 2 cm below the costal margin, this is the right subcostal port. If the falciform ligament is a large one, you can go through the falciform ligament and you can keep the trochar across the falciform ligament. The last is the stomach retraction port, it is 4 cm below the left subcostal port. You can see all the five ports, they are all directed towards the hiatus. After diagnostic laparoscopy, the first step you have to do is the decompression of the stomach. Put in a rails tube, aspirate nicely, then remove the rails tube. Don't remove it, you keep it in the chest. You should not keep the rails tube in the esophagus because the chance of injuring the esophagus is more if you keep the rails tube in the esophagus. This is the pars flaccida. We are dividing the Pars flaccida. Sometimes you get the axillary left hepatic artery. If it is there, it has to be preserved. You can see here also you get the axillary left hepatic artery, but it is lower down. So we need not worry about it. When it is bigger, you need to preserve them. You have to work above and below the artery. It is well lower down, so we need not worry about it. Now I am dividing closer to the hiatus. Once the parts flaccid is divided, the right crest comes into view. Now you have to develop a cleavage between the right crest and the esophagus. You have to go in small increments. The technique is use the active blade of the harmonic first to create a plane. Don't go too deep. You should not go into the esophagus or you should not go into the uh, muscle of the right crest. Go in small increments. Once you find the cleavage, keep on cutting. Here the technique is you have to use a blunt dissection and a sharp dissection. First you do the blunt dissection. You see, I am doing now the sharp dissection, then the blunt dissection, then again the sharp dissection. Once the cleavage is seen, then you can start dissecting in between the esophagus on the right crust. Our idea is just to circumferentially dissect the esophagus from right to left. I am now cutting the phrenoesophageal membrane anteriorly. You have to identify the posterior vagus as early as possible and safeguard this. See, you can see the posterior vagus, a vessel running over the posterior vagus. Just lift the posterior vagus along with the esophagus. Now I am descending a little bit inside the mediastinum. All this mediastinal dissection can be done later. Now lift the vagus along with the esophagus. Don't separate the vagus from the esophagus. 
that's very very important cutting a little bit on the left of the esophagus here you have to be careful about the anterior vagus it is better done from the other side from the left side now we are going to divide the short gastrics we usually divide the proximal two to three short gastrics the assistant has to hold the fat and the surgeon has to hold the stomach and divide in between until you see the window here you should not go closer to the stomach in sleeve gastrectomy we hug the stomach and go here you have to keep at least one to 1.5 centimeter away from the stomach because we are going to keep the stomach here in sleeve, sleeve gastrectomy we are going to remove the stomach so it's very important you go one to two centimeter away from the stomach then again migrate your instrument dividing the short gastrics you have to see underneath the blood vessels are better seen posteriorly rather than anteriorly so take the camera down and then divide now i am close to the fundus when you go closer to the fundus the assistant has to hold the posterior wall and the surgeon has to hold the anterior wall sometimes there will not be a gap between the stomach and the spleen here you should not use a diathermy it's very very important harmonic scalpel is a better instrument when there is no gap at all because you can't err on the spleen or on the stomach see the assistant holds the posterior wall the surgeon holds the anterior wall then only you will see this area very well see there is a big vessel you coagulate it nicely before dividing then migrate your forces then the traction and counter traction is very important here divide the all the attachments you have to free the fundus fully then only you can do a better wrap here again sharp dissection of the blunt dissection now we are dissecting over the left crust you can see the fat you move the fat towards the stomach or the esophagus part of blunt and part of sharp dissection all this dissection must be done in an air vascular plane if you cause a lot of bleeding you will have a lot of difficulty in finding which is the now and which is the pleura and you will have difficulties now i am dividing the posterior attachments pancreatogastric fold this is close to the crust now the crust is coming into view that's the cleavage then do the sharp dissection once you know the cleavage you can do the sharp dissection with the left hand you have to move the use of i guess to the right here again you have to be careful about the anterior vagus and the pleura now you can see both the crust clearly there is still a little bit of fat this will hinder formation of the retroesophageal window so it is always better to divide it from this side now you can see the retroesophageal window nicely you have to mobilize at least 6 cm of use of vagus this is a cotton tape i want to tie it at the oj junction take a cowed bowl grasper with the tip pointing upwards the cowed grasper is better it is easy to catch if the tip is pointing upwards with a straight grasper it is a little bit difficult to feed it so it is better if you use a cowed instrument a blunt cowed instrument is better take enough thread don't keep a shorter thread and then struggle 
take a longer tape and then tie it exactly at the body junction. Take it nicely at the body junction. Tie it. Don't strangle it. Keep a little bit of gap between the knot and the esophagus. Then put a surgeon's knot. Two knots are enough, but it is always better. Sometimes it will come off. So three knots ideal. Put a knot. Lift and see there is a gap. Tighten it. Then cut the extra thread. Otherwise it will be dangling and it will be disturbing your suturing. When the suture material comes in, there will be a lot of disturbance. So cut it short. Remove it immediately. Through the 5 mm instrument it will come. Then take a tooth grasper or a needle holder. Insert it underneath the knot and then hold it. This will have a very good grip. Now you can move the esophagus left, right, anterior, posterior and you can dissect you can get, get into the media sternum very easily. You have to be careful here about the posterior vagus and the pleura. You must safeguard the pleura. See, you can see the pleura there. You safeguard with your left hand and then dissect. Even if you make a small nick, it doesn't matter because the positive pressure ventilation will not allow the air to go in, inside the chest mostly if the rent is smaller. So you need to be careful about the pleura and the posterior vagus. Now I am dissecting on the left side in the mediastinum. If you have lengthened the use of vagus 5 to 6 centimeters, it is enough. There is a little bit of bleeding at the uppermost short gastrics. And this might bleed later in the immediate post-operative period. So it's always better to coagulate them with a bipolar. This is a Roby bipolar. This instrument is very good. You just keep it open and then apply the diathermy. Now comes the cruroplasty. The cruroplasty is done at a distance of 1.5 cm. It is a rule of 1.5 cm. That is 1.5 cm from the confluence of the left and right crust and each stitch must, must be at a distance of 1.5 cm and you leave a gap at the top 1.5 cm. Rule of 1.5 cm. While taking the needle out you should take the needle in a horizontal manner. See, you know, horizontally you have to, because the space is very less there, you are likely to injure the liver. So, we use 10 monofilament. Put a surgeon's knot, otherwise, every time you have to slip the knot. If you put a surgeon's knot, the crura will stay together. Don't tighten it too much, otherwise it will strangulate the muscle. The muscle will go in for necrosis. Just approximate. Put four or five knots because it's monofilament it's alone so the knot holding capacity is not that good then cut the thread cut both the thread don't leave excess thread there cut it there cut it again the next stage Take a nut, 1.5 cm above. See, I am protecting the iota with the left hand. That's an important point. The iota is immediately behind the left crest. Take the bite individually in each crest. Don't try to take the single sweep 
both across. No. Take a good chunk. You should not take a smaller bite. If you take smaller bite also, it will cut through. You need to be careful about the iota. This is the next stitch. See, I am protecting the iota, the left hand. Hold the needle in the right angle, then only you can take bite easily. See, I am taking it horizontally out. Unnecessarily, we should not injure the liver, they will start bleeding. You might need two or three stitches only, mostly. If the hiatus is very wide, you need four stitches. After putting, you just see whether it is enough or not. This is more than a little 1.5 cm. So I want to put another stitch very close. This you need not go 1.5 cm above because you want to narrow down, narrow down a little only. So Take the bite closer, take the needle out, while taking the bite on the right crust, you have to take the bite a little lower down, you should not go up, if you go up, you will strangulate the esophagus, it will cause obstruction. So come a little lower on the right crust, lower down, yeah, that's ideal. The gap must be must allow one 5 mm instrument freely. It should not be too loose or it should not be too tight. That's very very important. You should not cause dysphagia. There is enough gap, so we need not worry. There is little bit of hose. Cut both the thread, then remove. Now next step is the wrap. Take the fundus. Since the gap is more, the sunshine maneuver is easier. The same thread is used for the wrap also. Single thread we can finish off whole surgery. Take a good chunk. That part of fat can be removed, but we usually we don't remove. Yeah. While taking bite, you need to be careful about the antivagus. And this is the posterior wall. Take a good chunk. This we usually take it as a use stitch. Take this bite very close to the previous bite. You should not come too low. If you come too low, the wrap will become very big. Our idea is to create a short floppy nissen. It has to be short and it has to be floppy. It must be less than 2 cm, maximum 2.5 cm. See, I am going closer to the previous bite. Put a surgeon's knot. Just approximate. Four or five knots you need to do if it is a monofilament. Cut it. Don't leave any thread longer. The next bite is not a used bite, it is a straight one below the 
U stitch. This has to be taken closer to the previous stitch. It should not come too low. Single stitch only. So that the wrap is only 2 cm. That completes the wrap. At the end you must be able to insert a 5mm instrument underneath the wrap without any difficulty. See it has to be loose, it should not be too tight. And there must be enough gap. And lastly we want to fix the wrap to the cuss go to an area where there is no blood vessel and then you take a bite otherwise it will start bleeding at the end so now you take bite from both the crust because we have switched both the crust take bite don't go too too deep take the bite this is just to prevent the wrap getting inside the chest. The thread is very small, so it is better to have the Maryland to put the knots. If the thread is shorter, it's always better to use the Maryland. I am using the single knot. So this is better. You should not twist the stomach for this stitch. It has to lie comfortably there. That's important. There are a lot of mathematics in fund application that has to be strictly followed to have a good result. Now you cut the tape remove it immediately you can remove it through the 5mm port itself the needle also you remove through the 5mm port so thank you very much for watching this video i hope this video is useful your comments are welcome thank you very much